Mumba OAL gauge. Mumba has a device to measure maximum overall cartridge length, OAL in short. I get very accurate and repeatable readings with this device. The measurements are often repeatable within hundredths of a millimeter. I refer to this device as an OAL gauge. The OAL gauge has a round hollow steel tube with a standard M6 screw thread in front. The OAL gauge has a steel pin with a ring. The tube has a clamp screw at the rear. Use the ring to move the steel pin forwards and backwards in the tube. Clamp the steel pin in position with the clamp screw. Use one of your own cases tapped with an M6 screw thread. It is preferable to use a fired case from your own rifle. It provides a better fit between the case and the rifle chamber. In Casper Nienaber's reloading DVD and on the Mumba reloading website, in the chapters about Mumba products, the process to prepare your own case for the OAL gauge is discussed in detail. Screw the case on the Mumba OAL gauge. The steel pin moves forwards and backwards through the case. Fit the bullet loosely in the neck of the case. The bullet is pushed forward with the steel pin through the neck of the case. The OAL gauge with the bullet is placed in the chamber of the rifle. Ensure that it is seated firmly against the shoulder of the chamber by wiggling and rotating it until a snug fit is felt. Loosen the clamp screw. Keep the OAL gauge tightly in position and confirm that the case is fully pushed into the chamber. Push the bullet forward with the steel pin until the ogive touches the lens. I suggest that you use a blunt cleaning rod or wooden rod and slide it carefully into the barrel from the front until it touches the tip of the bullet. Move the bullet gently forwards and backwards between the rod and steel pin to confirm when it just touches the lands without excessive force. Clamp the steel pin in this position. Remove the Mumba OAL gauge whilst the bullet is pushed back from the front with the rod. This OAL gauge is so accurate that dirt in the barrel can affect the reading, so it would be prudent to ensure that the barrel and all equipment are clean before starting measurement. Let's measure the maximum OAL with a vernier on the OAL meter. Zero the vernier. Measure the standard OAL from the head of the case to the tip of the bullet. Zero the vernier on which the comparator is fixed. The use of the comparator equipment is discussed in detail on the Casper Nienaber's reloading DVD. Measure the OAL to the ogive. I call it OAL 30, referring to the 30 insert I used. Obviously, we cannot see or be absolutely sure that the case of the OAL gauge was seated fully and deep enough into the chamber. We must therefore check the measurement of the OAL gauge by using the rod method. The well-known method of making marks on the rod does not work so well. How square do you make the marks? How wide are the marks? And how consistent are you in measuring exactly to the mark? Mumba provides a bush that is attached to the rod with a clamp screw to ensure more accurate and repeatable measurements. Close the bolt without releasing the trigger. The firing pin must stay retracted so that it does not push against the rod and impair the measurement. The jag of the rod must always be removed so that the rod has a flat contact area for the measuring. Carefully slide the rod into the barrel until it touches the bolt face. 
Fasten the first bush with the bush pressed firmly against the crown and the rod kept firmly against the bolt face. Carefully remove the rod. Accurately measure the maximum barrel length. A steel ruler works well. Place the bush against the end of the ruler and get the reading at the tip of the rod. In this case, 558 millimeters. Slide a second bush onto the rod from the jag end of the rod. I find it easier to place a bullet into the barrel with tweezers. Now use a second cleaning rod without a jag and carefully slide it into the chamber and push the bullet lightly against the lands. Gently ride the bullet forwards and backwards between the two rods to confirm that it just touches the lands without forcing it into the lands. Hold the rod against the tip of the bullet while the bullet is supported by the second rod. Push the second bush, which is still loose, firmly against the crown and fasten it. Place the jaws of the vernier over the first bush and zero the reading. Measure the distance over the outside of the two bushes. While the width of the first bush is now automatically deducted, we measure the maximum OAL. The difference between measurements of the rod OAL and the mumba OAL gauge must be less than 0.3 millimeters. If the difference is more than 0.3 millimeters, check that the case on the mumba OAL gauge seats firmly against the shoulder of the chamber. Repeat and refine the procedure with both methods until you confirm that both methods give comparative measurements. Decide as follows on the OAL you are going to use to load your cartridges. Place the straight shank of the bullet in the case neck to a length equal to the diameter of the bullet. For example, 6mm for .243, etc. The one caliber seating rule. Remember to discount the boat tail. The boat tail usually goes deeper into the case past the neck and shoulder junction. If the neck of the case is shorter than the diameter of the bullet, the straight shank of the bullet is pushed into the case as far as the neck makes provision for. If necessary, shorten the OAL until the cartridge fits into your rifle's magazine without the tip of the bullet pressing against the sidewall of the magazine to avoid the bullet tip being damaged. If necessary, shorten the OAL even further until the jump to the lands is at least 0.5 to one millimeter. In summary, use the full length of the case neck as support for the bullet. Confirm that the bullet fits comfortably into the magazine and ensure that the jump to the lands is at least 0.5 to one millimeter.